Good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, I had a word on my heart I just wanted to share with you. It's from, uh, let me get my Bible. It's from uh, Psalm 24. It's a very well known verse. Verses. It's uh, 3 and 4. If you've got your Bible and you wanted to turn to it, it's Psalm 24 or Psalm 24. And verses 3 and 4. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. Let me read a portion of that again. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Now I know most of you will have know that scripture very well. What does it mean? There's a couple of things. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? And the second part, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. What does that mean? Does that mean when you're saved, that because you're cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, you have this new birth in Christ, that you automatically come in to the presence of God, the manifest presence of God, who will ascend this hill? Now, if you're saved, you have the right to come into this place. Jesus himself has made the way. But let not anybody think that you will skip into the presence of the Almighty God. You will not do that. God does not harry your friend down the road till you drop in for a cup of tea in the sense that you come before the throne of God, the majestic and awe-filled place where the train of his robe fills the temple. Don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about exuberant worship where men and women praise God and, and the, the joy of the Lord is their strength. Praise the Lord and hallelujah. I'm talking about a specific encounter with the living God that changes you fundamentally changes you. How does that how does that come about? I want to read a quote from uh, my wife and her family and I were at uh, uh, an exhibition yesterday in Kansas City in uh, Union Station. It's uh, from Auschwitz, the, the infamous concentration camp. And they had this exhibition there in only two states in America. Kansas was one of them. And so we took our opportunity and went to see that and we've been to the Holocaust Museum in, in DC, but this was this was quite unique. And so we took the opportunity and one of the quotes on the wall really struck me from one of the survivors from the concentration camp. I put my Bible down, I'm gonna read it to you. I have it on my computer there. His name was Witold Pelecci, and I probably didn't do his name justice. But I wanted to say his name because he said these words. He says, 1945, Camp, obviously meaning the concentration camp, Camp was a proving ground of character. Some slithered into a moral swamp. Others chiseled themselves a character of finest crystal. We were cut with a sharp instrument. Its blade bit painfully into our bodies, yet in our souls it found fields to till. We had all become just our bare essence. A man was seen and valued for what he really was. Very profound to me. They were reduced down into their bare essence. And what you saw in that camp with all the civility, all the veneers stripped away, was the bare essence of a man or the bare essence of a woman. Some responded magnificently. Many did not. Now what can we learn from this? What it means to be stripped down? Now we understand that God 
breaks a person in a sense. He uses broken vessels after we come to him. There's a process of sanctification. There's a process of being broken by the Lord, refined by the Lord in the fire. So what does that really mean? What does it mean to get down to the bare essence of a man? And you can ask yourself as you listen uh, to what I'm about to share with you where you are in this process. So uh, 15 years ago, I had a vision. And it was very profound for me. And I don't have, uh, I've been a Christian for over 30 years and, and these are five fingers on this hand. Less than that visions I've had in over 30 years. This was the most profound of all of them. It was 15 years ago. I'm standing in a place. I understand the Lord's beside me. I can't see him. I sense his presence. He's showing me something. And there it was, the court of the Gentiles. A mass, a broad people, mass broad people standing there. A wall in front of me. Small door. Low door. A door where you would have to bow to get under, under, in. Wide enough for everybody to get in, but low that you'd have to bow under, bow yourself down. And immediately as you go through this door, I went through this door, there was the brazen altar. The brazen altar, in case you didn't know, was a brutal place. A smelly place, a place where whole cows and bulls were sacrificed and blood and guts and fat and, and the smell. This, this brutal place, this brazen altar, it was the first thing that came into view. And I sensed in my spirit that was, there was a contrast being showed to me. Here was this brutal place, this altar, in comparison to the altars that we have today in most churches. A place where you come and get something. Come to the altar and get prayer. Come to the altar and get salvation. Come to the altar and get healed. Hands up, who needs to come forward to the altar? And yet this altar was nothing like the altars that we see in our church. This was a place where you came and brought something. You weren't coming to receive something. You came and you brought something for sacrifice. It was a place of sacrifice. And the kinds of things that were being sacrificed were perversions. And in its place, people were finding purity was filthy rags that were burnt in the sacrifice and in its place was beautiful white linens, was the ambitions of men being replaced and burned up but being replaced by the vision of God for their lives. A brutal place, no doubt. Once this place of sacrifice, the stripping down had taken place, you would move forward and there was the laver bowl you were cleansed in this water, the water of life. You could now see your reflection in this laver bowl. And then you move forward and there was the showbread. You were edified. You were fed. And then the light, the lampstand, you stood in the light of Christ Almighty. And then finally, a place of incense where the prayers rise up into the throne room of God himself. So, strip down. Strip down to your bare essence. A place of brutality, a place of cleansing, a place of being fed, a place of now being able to stand in the light of God, a place where the, the prayers arise to the very throne room of God himself. Now you're in the throne room of God. See, God has a fire and he requires his people to pass through the fire. Now, the only thing that's going to be burnt in the fire, this refining fire, is your flesh. It's your flesh. Until that you can tell the, the, what comes out of that fire, the gold is refined. It's refined in the fire, it steps forward, it steps out of the fire into the presence of God. It's been reduced down to your bare essence, standing naked before God as it was. Everything burned away. 
this is the process. This is the process of coming in to have this kind of encounter with the living God. Nobody skips into the presence of God. The scripture again is... Who may ascend the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Very essence, brothers and sisters, that's what God is looking for. The very essence. Now this man, the survivor of the camp, was exposed to uh, situations and circumstances that very few human beings had ever been exposed to and that stripped him down of everything that he had in this life until there was only his bare essence left. He says a man was seen and valued for what he really was. You know, that's what God wants from us. He wants it from you and he wants it from me. He wants the world to see who you truly are. He wants the world to see a reflection of the Lord Jesus Christ in a refined saint filled with the spirit of the living God, not encumbered by the veneers of society and of the civility of the world that surrounds us, this genteel world that surrounds us here in the West. No pretense, no airs. No graces, simply a broken man, a broken woman, a broken vessel filled with the life and the light of God, refined in the fire, glorified by God in the fire as the flesh is burnt away and we are stripped down. That's the only thing we lose in the fire, brothers and sisters, is this flesh the sacrifice before the brazen altar. Clean hands and a pure heart. That's who ascends the hill of God. That's who encounters God in, in, his, in this presence that changes everything. And a genuine encounter with God changes everything. You'll never be the same again. Now that old hymn, cast your eyes upon Jesus, or turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full into his wonderful face, and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his beauty and grace. That's the kind of encounter we're talking about here. Uh, Christendom is starving to death for lack of this kind of encounter, this kind of relationship with the Lord. He's looking for saints who will ascend his holy hill clean hands, a pure heart, a witness for him in the earth. That's our calling, brothers and sisters.